I mentioned that I was going to do this practice recital. Yeah, how'd it go? It went pretty well, I think. Good. I created an audio only edit of it also. I just cut out all of my banter and it's just pure music to music to music. Okay. Um, I think it kind of works well. I enjoy listening to it. I mean, there are mistakes that come up. Brower 8, I think, had like a couple of little things. I thought maybe we could work on that one today. Yeah. Related to that, uh, I've been uh, toying with the idea of like, what would it look like to have like self-published cassettes <laughs> or like <laughs> like indie releases of like October 2024 practice recital? And this is kind of like the brand. All my With social the media posts. Yes. Yeah, like all the social media posts have had like the list of the composers like that. Like that's, there's a variation of this as the thumbnail for the YouTube video. And it's cool. Sorry things. if I had to do that. I wanted to of read course, the side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's something that in today's marketplace and in today's climate, I think that almost any idea can come to fruition if there are enough like-minded people who show an interest. The fact that you chose cassette, like a cassette tape, <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, I, I have kind of punk rock, you know, I have like... these, you know, <laughs> archaic relics here in my drawer of they're, cassette they, tapes, you know, they're really making a comeback. Like if you, you just got to find something that'll play it. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people collect them like Pokemon cards without having an actual cassette player. Yeah. Like, yeah if you go to a concert nowadays, like probably not classical concerts, but like rock concerts, they're selling cassettes at the merch table, wow. which I think is... I'd have to, I have, I do have a cassette yeah. player somewhere back there <laughs> that hasn't seen the light of day in a very long time. Hello. Hello. Oh, um, let's see. Sound. Let's, I think that maybe I'm connected to these headphones. Um, try saying something. Hello. Okay. That's not working. All right. Try one more time. Hello. Okay. All right, so it's on the Mac Mini speakers. Now it's on my headphones. <laughs> All right, <laughs> technology. Yeah, didn't think of that. How's it going? Hi. Hello. It's Hello. busy. I just today is a yeah day like like yesterday. Uh huh. Like today. Okay. Yeah. You know? Oh right. I think I remember what you're talking about now. Yeah. This. I just two crazy yeah. days. That's all. They're right, good right, days. Right. They're just kind of crazy. That's all. Yeah. Well, thank you again for having me yesterday. That was uh, oh yeah, man. Fun. And uh, yeah, yeah. If I, I hope that I'm a net positive for the other students. You yeah, know? they get like another teaching opportunity, and well, they get yeah. that. Yeah, you know, when you come to studio class, they have a chance to to critique someone who's outside of the studio, <laughs> okay, and playing the piece well. In addition to that, I mean, you know, you as a prospective student. Yeah. For however long you're For going real. to be perspective. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, this is something that that um it gives people an opportunity to see. I mean, you can shadow for a day or something like that, but to come like you got to go into the uh, mic uh, microphone placement course that Rhett was teaching yesterday. I missed that one actually. Oh, you did? I, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I had to get lunch. I wasn't planning no, that's on <laughs> yeah. That's something that, you know, is is when the students have that opportunity to go into uh, one of the classes and then we can have prospective students or guests to come and observe that you're, yeah. you're getting a little bit more of kind of like the 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 real deal not yeah. like this you know thing where you feel like you're on the outside yeah totally totally um it feels like a very long conversation i have a lot of thoughts of like <laughs> You know, I'm still conflicted. I mean, yesterday at leaving, I was just like, I really want to do it someday. But, you know, the, uh, I'll give you my very quick two cents. And maybe uh -huh. it's because I mean, I'm going to be 50 in a couple of months. And I've been doing this for 36 years now. Yeah. Um, yeah. There are so many opportunities that I, I wasn't aware that I had when I was younger, that Ooh. I aged out of. There were a lot yeah. of competitions that by the time I got interested in doing competitions, I was already, I wasn't too old, but I was near the edge. You know, some, some, yeah. some competitions don't have age limits, but some did. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was interested and kind of prepared because I didn't have, when I was very young, I didn't have a teacher. So I didn't have anybody kind of saying, Hey, yeah. check that out. Hey, check that out. Um, <clears throat> it's one of those things where, Take advantage of every opportunity that you can, 
Mm -hmm. how far mm -hmm. you want to pursue them or if you want to pursue them at least you have options because the only thing yeah. for me in, in this career in music whether you're doing it as an enthusiast or you're doing mm -hmm. it as a semi-professional or professional is how many options do you have the yeah more options you have the yeah. better it's not because i mean it's not like order and take out where it's like oh my god there's 150 things and i don't know what i want it's mm -hmm. easy to round them down but when you're forced to only have one or two, you know, in terms of options, you know. Okay. That's, yeah, that's just my... That's defense. super interesting. Um, I, like, just because you said the word competitions, I mm -hmm. mean, it's always in my head, like, it would be such a cool dream to just, like, non-ironically try to compete, you know, just, mm -hmm. like, one round you know, not be laughed off stage, like, play decently, you know, I feel like that is, I don't know if that's a realistic kind of goal, like, I think, I started at 26, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's, I didn't even listen to classical music before that, like, so I was starting from, like, zero, I played guitar, like, I played jazz guitar and stuff in high school, mm -hmm. and I had, like, some left-hand chops and whatnot, but, like, I feel you know, 26, you're already too old to, to compete. Like it, it depends on what about. competition we're talking about. I mean, are we yeah. talking about the GFA? That's, uh, you know, yeah, the you Guitar know. Foundation of America or Tariga or the, the Pitaluga. Mm -hmm. Like these are like, those are pro level competitions. That's a different right. thing. Right. With, and competitions is a much longer discussion than I don't mm -hmm. want to burn your lesson time talking about it. Um, yeah, there yeah. is like a one module in building a music career at school where I, I, just spend talking about competitions and, and their benefits mm -hmm. uh, to doing them. And I don't think that there are necessarily drawbacks, but on a personal level, some people may not like them. Yeah. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I see their benefits. I've done them. I've won some, I've lost a lot and just like many people, but the, <clears throat> you always start with small ones that are regional. So you would want to look at things like, is there uh, any kind of thing in New England, mm -hmm. right? So there used to be an American String Teachers Association. That got to be a national one. I don't know if they still do that or not. Um, is there a local, like uh, sometimes the Bach competition? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, you have to look, or is there a category? Is there no age yeah. limit or is there an age yeah, limit? Yeah. And here's your category. Um, and that's where as older students, you get burned, you don't have that option anymore, unless there are guitar societies that have them. So like the Frank yeah. Wallace, uh, scholarship competition is mm -hmm. one. I don't know if there's an age limit. I don't think that there is, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, small prize and that's mm -hmm. cool. But again, it's like, Hey, you know, you, you won or you placed or, or something like that. Yeah. But competitions and, and I'm going to tell you like what my kind of bottom line is when you are playing any whatever piece it is mm. or whatever level competition it is and you have achieved a level of technical mastery on that piece mm -hmm. i don't mean mastery of the instrument as a whole and you're you know john williams level player what i mean is is that yeah. you don't struggle in any way on the piece you're going to compete with uh -huh. you understand you know you know the harmonic progression you know everything you can know about that piece and you've performed it multiple times, right? Then that thought can be inserted. Maybe yeah. this is ready for a competition. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. to to kind of go back to what you said and to answer that question, I don't think it's a question of ability uh -huh. so much as it is, hey, we can have goal. If you can find right. an opportunity to pursue that particular goal then mm -hmm. it's a question of how long will it take to achieve a point of readiness for it right like i mean it's to me it's a it's an interesting question like if one were pursuing you know um a craft but like, like this um at a hobbyist amount of dedication like and i just think of like time like mm -hmm. two hours a day like if somebody's studying smart classical guitar at two hours a day can they someday like in the 
in the order of decades, <laughs> like by like it, that or is fifty or something, <laughs> or or like is it because it is an athletic thing? So like, do your fingers just move slower and like you're just? Oh, you know, I mean, let's put the, I don't it. like I've been doing this for thirty six years and I don't <laughs> I haven't gotten slower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. That's what it seems like yeah. so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. But I mean, I'm not approaching 70. I'm just approaching 50. Right. Um, I know that that'll happen at some point. But the question is, is like, how slow? Like, is it going to be that I can't perform the pieces? Or is uh-huh. it just, well, I just can't play at 160 or 150. So you don't play pieces. You know, it's right. like a sing- like you watch some of the bands mm-hmm. right now where you have a lot of singers from the 80s and the 90s. Uh-huh. And they get out there and they're trying to sing with the same energy at this in the same keys in the same range that they did when they were 20. Mm, mm-hmm, a lot of bands mm-hmm. are starting to tune down like the bands with like the legacy bands they're either tuning down a half step or even a whole step mm-hmm. they're they're changing the parameters or they're slightly altering the melody so that they're not advertising the things and once this changes there's nothing you can do about it yeah right it's mm-hmm. not like you i mean well if you want to be a you know phony start auto pitch auto-tune and stuff like that but Mm -hmm. so a lot of bands start to tune down Mm -hmm. to accommodate issues of range all those kinds of things so there are points where um those are less realistic Uh you know because you just don't have that 20 year old um flexibility but to the answer to your question is on two hours a day, it would be highly unlikely. You you right, need to be doing right. three to four mm-hmm. in that zone just because of how many times that you would have to be to gain a certain amount of consistency in a 15 or 20 minute program over a period of time. Mm-hmm. And so that's probably not the only thing you're working on. Mm-hmm. So two hours a day, it's less likely. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there are very few times where I ever say it's not a possibility or it's never because I've seen some pretty amazing things and yeah. it comes to adjustment. So if that if you said, hey, man, I found a competition with no age limit that's regional, right. it's not an international one, and I'd like to maybe think about doing it. Mm-hmm. Then we say, OK, how long would it take to get you to that point where right. like, like the growth that you've had in the A section of Vols 3? Uh-huh. So when you've got like that solidity of sound 100% of the time, mm-hmm. check. Mm-hmm. Now, what other pieces are you thinking about? And you start working right. it down like a checklist. And then you can create a little bit more of a, mm-hmm. of, of long-term planning for long-term goals. Right. You know? Okay. Yeah, I'm, this isn't at all something oh, I'm no, it, We're, just, we're exploring an idea, it's, man. Yeah, it's interesting. You know? and, um, but competition yeah, should like, always start small. Right. right. You know, you don't want, you should find ones that are local. Usually they have lower yeah. prize, like they're not big yeah. prize money or anything. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know if the Musical Club of Hartford has uh, a competition or anything, but that's the kind of thing you want to look at and try yeah. to find if there are age brackets. Yeah. I I just feel like there should be age brackets and like other types of brackets the way that like tennis does or something. and like, for most of like them there seniors are seniors division or something or like the no degree division or something, <laughs> you know like the no degree division I, right like you, it, you can't compete in this if you have a degree yeah well with yeah. the ones with no age limits many times what they'll say is you can't have professional representation meaning you can't have oh. an agent they're trying to make sure that pro players don't like just walk in and try to steamroll everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Uh so they do try to create certain, certain deterrents or barriers to that Mm. just to avoid problems Uh, because competitions at the beginning and end of the day are a jumpstart in a career. Yeah. Right. You know, that's what they are. And that's why they occur mostly at younger age groups is because there are plenty of people who've never won a competition in their life who play incredibly beautifully and well and have great careers. Yeah. But competitions can also, you know, mm-hmm. allow for personal growth. I mean, every time yeah. I competed, win or lose, I still got a lot better because uh-huh. it starts to focus uh-huh. you in a very different way than going to school does. Yeah. You know? Right, right. You have like a very you have different a incredibly, focus, like a different 
it's a very yeah. different focus and an incredibly limited amount of material. Uh huh. You know, uh, like limited amount being your set list that you're. Yeah, I mean, most or... competitions it's like twenty to thirty minutes max. Uh -huh. Some of them are like a required right. piece and then another piece. Right, um, right. I think with the Frank oh, wow. Wallace one, it's it's like one of Frank's pieces and then uh -huh. another 21st century piece. Yeah. So yeah. there are, um, it's not like giving a full hour recital. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's a different set of yeah, demands. Yeah, that's you know what interesting. I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that, that is a different, because I, I keep thinking of a full hour recital. As a there goal, are some competitions yeah. like that. Um, uh -huh. I can't remember if the Concert Artist Guild competition or Chamber Music America, or these are larger ones where it's like, they want you to go play a concert and they're going to uh -huh. use that as uh -huh. the criteria rather than like a required piece, a newly composed piece, and then 20 minutes of your choosing. Yeah. That's still like 30 minutes of music. Um, on, the, on the topic, um, I'd like to show one thing quickly and then mm -hmm. we could jump into sure. any kind of music. But um, I, for continuity from last time, I mentioned that I was going to do this practice recital. I yeah, how'd it go? It went pretty well, I think. Good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I created an audio only edit of it also, and I uploaded it. So it, um, I just cut out all of my banter and it's just pure music to music to music. Okay. Um, I think it kind of works well. Like I enjoy listening to it. I mean, there are mistakes that come up. Um, like some of the newer Brower pieces, like Brower eight, I think had like a couple of little things coming okay. up and. I thought maybe we could work on that one today. Yeah. But then uh, related to that, this is kind of silly, but um, uh, I've been uh, toying with the idea of like, what would it look like to have like self-published cassettes <laughs> or like <laughs> like indie releases of like October 2024 practice recital. And this is kind of like the brand of uh, like all my with social media joy. posts. Yeah. yeah, like all the social media posts have had like the list of the composers like that like that's there's a variation of this as the thumbnail for the youtube video and it's cool sorry if i had to do that i wanted to of read course, the yeah <laughs> yeah like the j fold out thing but i think yeah, man anyways. you know in again i'm gonna show my age yeah you know is that it's something that in today's marketplace and in today's climate I think that almost any idea can come to fruition if there are enough like-minded people who show an interest with yeah. it. Um, the fact that you chose cassette, like a cassette tape, <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, I, I have kind of punk rock. You know, I have like... these, you know, <laughs> archaic relics here in my drawer of they're, cassette they, tapes. You know, they're really making a comeback. Like, if you, you just got to find something that'll play it. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people collect them like Pokemon cards without having an actual cassette player. Yeah, like, yeah if you go to a concert nowadays, like, probably not classical concerts, but like rock concerts, they're selling cassettes at the merch table, wow. which I think is... I'd have to, I have, I do have yeah. a cassette yeah. player somewhere back there that hasn't <laughs> seen the light of day in a very long time, probably is yeah. very dirty yet. Um, cool. So, yeah, we did some Vols 3 yesterday. Thank you again for that. Um, and mm -hmm. you had that comment about Brow Rate being the last one that one should learn. Yeah. I don't really remember. I don't think I ever actually studied this with my um, teacher way back when. So, um, I'd, yeah, maybe I'd like to take a look at it. Or, Absolutely. Um, the or reason anything that you want to work on. Today. Out of the first 10, it should mm -hmm. be near the end, if not yeah. the end. And the reason for that is based on the, se the sequence of difficulty. Mm -hmm. So if you think right. about the order we did, mm -hmm. alternation of I and M and thumb with a melody in the bass is one of the most fundamentally basic things we can do. Mm -hmm. And so it comes first. So whether you did one and then four or four and then one, for you, it yeah. doesn't matter. If it was someone who, who had never played and they were going from the ground up, it'd probably be one mm -hmm. and then four just because of the you know half bars and the comp you know the two three meter changes but then you look and you can see okay basic arpeggios like pmi pmi uh, pim uh -huh. pia those kind of come next and we see you know pieces with simple scales arpeggios in one direction arpeggios that change direction melodic arpeggios and then counterpoint being near the end yeah. because these contain the most complex amount of of 
technical coordination, but in the case of counterpoint, also musical coordination. Yeah. So a lot of people can yeah. play like the first ten bars of number eight, but if you mm -hmm. can't communicate a canon, yeah, yeah, at the and, uh, seventh, I think, mm -hmm. then then it's almost like we're just hearing chords. We're not hearing two imitated uh, an imitated melody. Right. Yeah. And I that's don't hard. Know if I've ever learned that to that level, I guess. But like, we, I how long they, you know? If, yeah. if you can do row, row, row your boat with somebody else, then sure. you can perceive of the imitation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's why it comes later, you know, mm -hmm. and that's just in the first 10. So when you look at 11 through 20, mm -hmm. we start getting kind of clusters. Like you could do these three next or these two next or these three next. And as long as we're using that kind of system or a mm -hmm. system like it to be able to determine what I call the inventory of a piece, but the overall responsibilities, are there lots of bars as an upper position, those kind of things. But yeah. speed is not one of those criteria. Okay. Uh huh. In terms of which like rating difficulty. Sequence. Yeah, yeah. The order and the yeah. difficulty of. I leave speed okay. out of it hmm. only because that, all of the other things are really, you could be doing any piece of music. Speed as a, um, as a barrier. Mm -hmm. has more to do with our own personal initiative in terms of growth okay. than it does tech sheer like technical difficulty i'm not sure if i follow that like it's our own so there are some people who are like i'm just not interested in, in spending all the time and weeks months years that it takes to develop scales at 140 or 150 so that's fine all that means is there are these pieces that you just won't be able to play. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, if if those are all my scores, we're talking yeah. about like that much. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. All the yeah. rest of them have scales slower than that. Those. Right. right. It, so right. it means we're probably not doing Rodrigo, Tedesco. Like, okay. Then there are some students say, yeah, yeah I'm going fast enough. Okay. Again, yeah. if you're not in school and you're not on a curricular path towards you have to be here, 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 here. Uh -huh. Then it comes down to our own personal initiative in terms of our goals. Yeah. So if someone says they want to do X piece, okay, they have to have which arpeggios at what speeds and how fast should their two and three octave scales be uh -huh. so that they have the technical acumen to play the, to, to learn that piece without having to learn how to do that mm -hmm. and that piece. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are some, you know, folks who are just like, no, nah, I play fast enough. I don't need to to go and and do that so that's why i don't use tempo as one of the criteria in difficulty okay yeah okay you know because that really does come down to a certain amount of personal decision making yeah that makes sense you know yeah. whereas dude i mean i think of the thousands of pieces that have contrapuntal material in it and it's like well okay now you're starting to cut out half the repertoire Mm. Right, even if it's mm. basic counterpoint, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Or melodic arpeggios, yeah. you'd never play soar five. It's just, you know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that's why I don't consider that. It doesn't mean that playing fast is easy, hmm. but that is much more of an individual thing. And a lot of pieces, like as you can tell with false three, there's a wide variety of tempi that people can play this piece at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Cool. Cool. That that makes sense. Um, Speaking of studies, let's start there. Yeah, that sounds great. So number eight, or should we revisit any of the prior ones? Well, or? nine is the only one we really haven't done a whole lot on. I have, yeah, I barely started nine, so I don't okay. really know if I'm ready for that today. Then, no, I no, no, have... no. I don't want to put you on the spot. What I would say yeah. is then for next Friday, we okay. definitely want to have nine mm -hmm. on the stove. Okay. And have you looked at eight yeah so i've been playing eight it was part of this recorded recital good. even <laughs> okay but well yeah, then let's it's... hear eight okay yeah that sounds good um okay <laughs>
there's some nice stuff going on in there. Do you notice that the the A section is smoother the second time around? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. You you kind of a little bit more keyed in to the cannon the mm. second time around because you've had that bomb 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 like drilled into your head. Yeah. <laughs> like for the one two for like eight lines, right? Um yeah. Overall, it was pretty, you know, pretty well expressed. We're going to work on how to interpret mm -hmm. imitative material in that. And it's a perfect, like, it's just so beautiful and simple. The arpeggio sounds really nice. There are a couple of details, I think, that we can do. But before we dive into that, the structure is ABA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. How contrasting do you hear or want to hear the B section? So far, I haven't heard it as contrasting. It's more like a repetition. We come back to it and like maybe some intensification, like in okay. the kind of energy of it a little bit. But um, yeah, I, I so far have not tried practicing it with like great contrast. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I like about contrasting material so in this case, he's using an arpeggio and it's Pumoso. Mm -hmm. So whenever I see something like that, the first question I have to ask myself, oh. once I'm kind of getting in my fingers, go ahead. Wait a minute. I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, it's A, B, A. I thought you meant A versus A prime. No, but no, no. Those A are B. Okay. A yeah, versus yeah, yeah. B. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I think definitely contrasting. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So the question that you should ask yourself and think about, how contrasting? How dramatically different yeah. do you want these things? Because, I mean, it's very cool. If you want to try to, it says Pumoso. It doesn't say, you know, Rapido or Molto Vivace or anything like that, right? So do you want to try to communicate this? So it's this Pumoso, so it's got to be a little bit more than the A section. Mm -hmm. But are we trying to really keep it kind of a, more motion, a lot more motion? Great. But how much is that? Are you going for yeah. this? Or are you going for this? Because all of a sudden it's like, ooh, we start getting some, like, again, options, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And so the closer that if we have two sections that are contrasting, the closer they are in similarity, the less effective our expression can be in some regards. Uh -huh. So it's just something to think about. It's like, what tempo do you feel like that B section, whether, whether I can do it or not, uh -huh. right? I might not be able to do that yet. Right. But it, it'll help me go, okay, I, I hear it like this, or maybe you heard a recording and find the tempo. It's like, I want that. Yeah. That right. way you can start conceiving of that. Like even if, let's say that you don't have the speed, you can still be going. Right. And making sure that you're kind of doing that. So you could even just play the, the melody through the B section until you had that where you want it. Okay. Yeah. Um, good. So here's how you're going to handle the, the, the A section. Play only the top line for the first three measures. Great, stop. Only the top line. Oh, the top line and yeah. the top voice. Yeah, the voice. top voice. The right. Top voice. Okay. Uh. So now something now we start seeing some really cool stuff. What's the first note of the of the upper voice? E. I think. Right. I, I played this A at the end and I didn't mean to. Oh, do you think it's an A? Do you? I guess it is uh, based on the rest that's written in, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we've got that cool old Star Wars interval starting I our see. piece off. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's your melody, right? So that's your subject. Okay. Cool. Now we got to make some decisions about that. That. How many voices do you hear here? One or two? 
Yeah, I was going to ask, what do you think of blending those or not? Yeah, yeah. It, dude, I mean, that's I would, a cool thing about yeah. the guitar. I mean, we can let all sorts of stuff ring together and, it, and we get different implications. Mm-hmm. Before I get to that, like maybe I want this. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. I don't know if I can do this. So right now I hear four voices. I hear this. Actually five. Uh-huh. It's really gorgeous, but if I'm letting everything ring, it can muddy the water in terms of what we're doing this way. Right. right. So what I what I like to do to start is you can let your overtones ring, but I'm going to just release the pressure in one. That's all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, now that's yeah. really clear melody. And that was like, your legato was beautiful. Yeah, yeah I was and we genuinely want... seeing it as two voices. So that was my mistake. Yeah. Uh, no, so no, wait, wait, wait. Intentional. Yeah. I, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't think it's necessarily a mistake, more of an oversight. And the yeah, reason yeah. why I think those two things are different, okay? Mm-hmm. You go on roller skating and you bump into somebody. You didn't mean to do that. That's a mistake. Mm-hmm. You meant to do something else. But I, I try to even classify my errors. Like, yeah. what was a mistake? Oh, I never hit that note before, man. That was a mistake. Versus, oh, man, I've been hitting that wrong note a lot. That's not a mistake. Yeah. I learned a wrong note. An right. oversight is I, I, didn't, I didn't see something that was yeah. presented to me and the reason why I have to do this and why I try to talk to you all about classif- classifying these mm-hmm. is there are different approaches to preventing those for each of us in the future and oversight when I used to think about that as a mistake uh-huh. it, I got better at it but I never got good at avoiding it, at, at being able to, to how I look at a piece of music. Okay. That never really changed until I started to see, wait a minute, I didn't make a mistake. There's something I didn't see. Yeah, yeah, like you weren't thinking, looking for that detail. Right, or, and so that uh-huh. then changed like the lens I was, exa- I was learning the piece through. Yeah. Um, so some people think, oh, you're just splitting hairs, and, and that's fine, but there are mistakes, there are wrong notes, mm-hmm. and then there are there's oversight. And yeah. dude, I mean, there's plenty of times that every, I can think of pro players that we have oversights. It's like, oh, I can't believe I did that. Yeah. Like I didn't see that. Oops. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. But a mistake is when I meant to do this and this happened. Right. Uh-huh. A wrong note is I learned I learned a note wrong or yeah, a wrong rhythm sense. or something. Yeah. Because that way I have different ways of handling each of those things. And that in turn makes me more efficient. But also I can then learn how to learn yeah. better. So yeah, yeah. for me, when you see that first note, because it's in, it's lower, yeah. I can see how you might see that as not necessarily part of that line because it's a big skip rather than a step. Yeah, yeah. You know? So in this but. case, you just did that great. Next question. let those all ring or Mm -hmm. so this is why I use that term oversight because you played it it sounded real nice but which one should I do as I'm learning the piece and so like just like rolling you know you ever get roll happy and you just start rolling every chord because it's Mm -hmm. like if you roll really well which you do you you just start rolling yeah everything's like beautiful oh wow yeah so we never go (laughs) yeah yeah so in a case like this when you're learning it Mm -hmm. unless there is a a a texture at work like where those are just written as eighth notes but we know they're supposed to ring yeah so in something like this Mm -hmm. i'll immediately again try to play the piece without overlap see right because now what i can do is do that here Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. otherwise my bass sounds like this yeah yeah right yeah Yeah. so if we clarify one voice we can then see how that affects the other voices so now try the bottom voice okay Now 
right hand fingering here because it's your bottom voice. I'd use P Probably all the way P through, through, it. through yep. for all of it. Yeah. Now you're doing something really cool, and I'm almost mad at you because it sounds so good. And you're not doing it when you play. Is it vibrato? It or, is, or, man. You had yeah, a chord, yeah. dude. You played that fa. That fa was gorgeous when you played that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, so I'm still in like the learning the notes stage of this piece, I guess, and uh, I gotta start adding that in earlier. Well, uh, yeah, maybe. Um, I, I don't know if earlier is the idea because as we learn the piece and we we're in that you know dating phase mm -hmm. right okay. i mean we're just going out to a movie and, and a cup of coffee <laughs> you know we're not to the point where we're going to metro beast and simsbury kind of date you know yeah when yeah. we're learning a piece Talking of music phase. yeah yeah we're in the hey we're going out for coffee phase yeah yeah so mm -hmm. some of those things might not be apparent but you can do it early on it just you might end up you might end up doing things without intent. Okay. And so as a result, I mean, I love what you just did, but it becomes a whole different story. Like you have to vibrate both voices now. Uh-huh. And so the way we vibrate a single voice, you were moving it. If we do that with two voices, it sounds like there's a Leslie on, like like the speakers going around, you know. Okay. So we can get a little wonky, like it's just it's like vibrato overkill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's something to kind of think about. But I love what you did. So now you've expressed each line. Now can you maintain the integrity of both of those melodies moving? this way yeah rather than thinking about them as chords think about them as sure. two independent voices that collide to make harmony yeah now that was really cool because I heard two quite independent voices um in the in the upper voice i i don't use an open e i do just closed yeah yeah it's not the open e and i've been i'll use this that. open e uh -huh. so that one that's right in measure three that's an okay. open e yeah that's written there okay. but in measure that's four yeah just keep that as a closed one okay then the next one's open yeah yeah and the only do, reason like, the this like collapse the pinky from four or I don't know I, I would just keep that one open uh, okay. one two three four measure six yeah and the reason why to use so those closed hand, yeah so, yeah the reason to keep those closed is a lot of cases we could do this and it sounds very cool but when we're talking about a melody mm-hmm having a closed versus an open kind of draws our attention away from the lyric sense of the melody and it becomes more harmonic like we're focusing more on hearing the difference between those two notes rather than or right so when we have a closed versus an open in a melody it can I get mean, a little distracting I don't mean playing them together Oh, I know. Or, no, but oh. what happened is when you were doing measure one, two, three, four, you had done this. Okay. So you had done a closed and then an open in measure four. Oh, okay. That's I all. Did, I definitely didn't mean to do that then, yeah. But the next opening yeah. is... Right. Right? Uh -huh. The only other thing that I heard in here is measure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Okay. There's a little rhythmic hesitation right yeah. before you play the A on beat three. Yeah, that was a mistake. That was okay. Like a... That A is a little late. So if you've got this A is cool. Is it not? One and two and three and one. Oh, yeah. I was...
was miscounting it. Was that's alright. Okay. That, that's why I'm here. <laughs> right? Yeah! Okay, yeah. That was great. Right. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Now you can decide how you want to hear it. If you want to hear... There's no tempo indication. Do you want to hear... your oyster Mm -hmm. if you're going to play it on the more lyrical side then you can really contrast by cooking the pumoso yeah 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 if you play this on the faster side then you might have to push the pumoso a little bit more to create Mm -hmm. that that Mm -hmm. thing okay go ahead and start the b section for me It sounds like these tiny little hesitations before yeah. the G. It's just like, little oops. Mistakes. Yeah, I gotta, yeah. yeah, just it's like, yeah. oops, I got to go that way, not repeat again. That's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. So you've got accents in the bass, and I think sometimes those accents are coming through. Mm-hmm. An accent isn't always how hard we hit something. It's how much it stands out. So uh-huh. we, can, we can punch and pop an accent to really make it come out, or we can back off the non-accented notes. Uh-huh. So okay, imagine right, like right, here right. you're playing these three notes and then I have to accent. Yeah, yeah. Or I can play that bass line and it's going to sound accentuated when I bring okay. those other two down. So if you take the A sharp and the B and just play them real like lightly. Right. All of a sudden this bass sounds really big and in your face and I'm not really hitting it that hard. Yeah, yeah. You know? Or you can get more edge. Where you're really laying into it. Mm-hmm. Both I think have a certain validity. You just gotta choose which one you're gonna do. So there's a clear difference between me C C and that mm-hmm. A A B A B A B A B. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. what I love is, is the echo on the top. Mm-hmm. The open E and then is like really cool. The way you're doing it, the color stands out good, everything. So how fast do you hear this? So far like about there, but I haven't I haven't tried hearing it otherwise. Like I feel I am still in the learn the notes stage That's cool. and yeah, but Try like this. trying to, yeah. So there's your quarter. You know, I know you might make a mess, it's okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just getting your getting your dipping your toe in. really good first run through with that okay yeah. now the reason why I asked you to do it that way is you notice now we there are a couple of things that were working really good at lower tempi but now all of a sudden there's this little thing or that little thing and it's the a I M A I M okay. here this is a great opportunity with all the stuff we've been talking about in Vols 3 with this terms of getting that quality of sound off that A finger, uh-huh. 
this is a great time to be able to go. So you got the A. That's got two exchanges in it. Oh, listen to that tone, dude. Right. That's great. Yeah. That's it. Now, when you're doing this, go ahead and hold your hand up for a second and shadow box A, I, M. A, I, M. A, I. Because it's when certain fingers release, A, I, M, A, I, M, right? Sometimes people release between M and I, and they'll go A, I. Oh. Then they'll pluck M and exchange there, and then A comes later. That's a little more complicated, I think, for the hand. Okay. Whereas it, you're, you're doing A, uh -huh. pluck I, A comes back out, Yeah. M, and, and then pluck A and I and M come back out. Mm -hmm. So essentially you've got M and A alternation. So if you find that that's a little difficult, just go on to one string mm -hmm. and just do a little M A alternation like before you actually do this as kind of a warm up for that, you know? Just kind of get that motion going. Cuz it's funny. We don't really do scales M and A. I mean, you can, right? And that's good practice, but we're not going to perform them that way, right? right? I mean, they're far more limited than I, A, or I, M. Mm -hmm. So when we're working on M, A alternation, even in scales, we're actually really assisting our arpeggios right, in right. a big way. So yeah. if you find that this feels a little labored, uh -huh. just do a couple of M, I, like even just going... M, A? Oh, sorry, yeah, M, A. Just a couple little exercises like that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're going to find that that's not a problem anymore. You feel how kind of crowded they are? Yeah. 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 You do that for just like three minutes, and then you go right back to this. And it's going to feel really smooth. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That's my overall on it, man. I think you got a real good foundation for it, and that's those are the things to me that make this really kind of come to life. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Good. That leaves number nine. Yeah. For I next mean, week. I've, okay. I think next week will be. Yeah. Better. For next week, not now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Then uh, I don't have any specific questions or things. Like, I wonder if there's anything that you want to check in on or. Yep. Um, yeah. What is it? <laughs> because we're only doing an hour today, we're uh -huh. going to do a we're going to do some spot check with number with false three. Okay. Okay. Because cool. you played it really well in class yesterday. Uh -huh. Can you start just the C section? Okay. Um, yeah, the C section. Mm -hmm. Cool. So go ahead, get yourself tuned up, getting the yeah. getting the right mindset. Have your score handy. But you're gonna still be doing it from memory. Yeah. I need to find my score. Did you get it back yesterday? I did. I okay. believe so. Yeah. I mean, if not, I can hunt the student down that had it. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to um, remind everybody there, and I suppose anybody who might be watching these videos, uh, we are doing monthly open mic nights, uh, Mujo open mic nights on the first Monday of okay. each month. Uh, what um, time? 8 p.m.? 8 p.m., yeah. Send it so, to me in a, in a real quick text or email, yeah. and I'll forward it to the students at heart. That'd be cool. It's okay. kind of like studio class or yeah. something. It's People are showing up, playing the same piece month after month. Excellent. To, to share progress. and Yeah. That's great. Not to have anybody there. Um, yeah. Where the hell did that? Oh, here it is. Okay, great. Cool. So C section of false three. Yeah. Um, sounds good.
cool, and then we won't don't have to worry about the transition. Good. Do you notice how it took you a second to get into it? Yeah, yeah. I felt like I was like not feeling the vibe yet until I was playing it a little bit more. Yeah. This this way of working, I I don't do in the beginning when you're learning a piece necessarily. You can. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, it can add more confusion when you're learning a piece to do uh -huh. it then. But, like, you got the A section down, great. You got the B section down, you put them together, you get the C section, and then you go an A, B, A, C, A, whatever. But now, when you're in this state of refinement and performance development, being able to start, I'm going to say, from almost any place, yeah, mm -hmm. does three things. One, it really starts to show where I may have certain deficiencies in the piece and not be aware of it because I've had a minute and a half to warm it up. Yeah. So on a mm -hmm. bad night, I may do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So by starting there, it starts to say, ah, this and ah, that. The second thing is it does definitely help reinforce memory. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we're not doing yeah. it from the beginning, so we're really making sure that we're kinetically, audibly, and intellectually aware of what we're doing in the piece and third especially when you you had you know practicing with time limitations mm -hmm. there like when i played that concert at the uh guitar festival last saturday up in new york i don't think i played through that whole program probably a week before now these are all pieces that i knew so these were not new pieces uh -huh. to me mm -hmm. but some of them are pieces i hadn't played in a long time like the, the Dion's I hadn't played in quite a while. So it's like you're you're working in this very, like you're building a wall, man, put the brick here, brick here, brick here, great. And we sure up things over here, brick here, brick here, you know, right. so that you're creating a certain balance. And then as I got ready the week mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. that was fine. Uh, two weeks before would have been fine too. It's just, you know, with the time limitations that I had teaching, it was the week of, run through it, and it was fine. Yeah. So doing this kind of thing in part of your practice is to say, great, I'm going to start with the C section today and see how it goes. So yeah, yeah. first thing, man, the melody in 70, your A finger, like it was like we just talked about that yesterday and, and it's mm -hmm. already like starting to stick. Cool. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So start that C section again and let's find where that little issue is. So you nailed it that time, right? I think it was better, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was it then? Ah, I just wasn't ready. What, what 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 made that spot a little funky? I think I was trying to visualize a little bit like the kinetic feeling of playing mm -hmm. that part, but I wasn't yet like audiating it when I like prepared to play it the first time around like I don't think I was like hearing it yeah. I was more just like feeling like play here move my, my fingers arm, go here right feel it here here yeah yeah so like I think having it in my ear is what helped yeah when you have this this one we're only moving from here to here and then oh. back right right here we're at five So some of it, I agree, was like, oh, I wasn't hearing with intent what I wanted to do. But think we're in seventh, tenth, seventh. Right, fifth. Depending on your fingering, this is going to be eighth. Fifth. Yeah, I think I usually use two. Yeah, so if you're using two, then you're in seventh position, right? So you're going seven, ten, seven then five seven five and so as yeah. part of the practice of doing the c section you're just kind of reinforcing the positions that you're playing in that's all mm -hmm. because when we're playing the piece where well, i mean i'm not thinking seventh and tenth and blah, 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 blah. just playing yeah but wherever i find a little like thing yeah. like that in my playing 
-hmm. It's like, okay, hang on. I might not have really been clear as to where my arm should be to go from seven, ten, seven, ten, seven, five, seven, five. Because that's how you can create that consistency so that you could be sitting and drinking a cup of coffee and laying that thing out, okay? Mm -hmm. The A that goes up after this. Yeah. Try, yeah, don't take too much time because we'll end up adding a whole beat. Okay. Right? Yeah, I don't want you to be in a rush. Yeah. So that way, if you're going one, two, three, a oh, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, oops, sorry, one, two, okay. one, two, okay, one, two, there it is, one, two, yeah. See, I like that one because you were able to sit on that first A just a little yeah, bit, but it yeah. didn't warp the rhythm. That's going to create a okay. slightly better flow mm-hmm. when when you're uh, when you're doing it, and depending on if you're starting in the beginning, that may not have been something that you did. But if we hang out too long, yeah. that measure gets a little too much time. Three, so you'd have that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and three, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then you keep going. Good. Now, in 65 and 66, you're doing this pretty well. Mm-hmm. There isn't a cello rondo there. Mm-hmm. So we've, we've kind of steered away from the cello rondo for one very good reason. We want to make sure that we can nail it before we start yeah. expressing ourselves right. too much. But in this now, when you have that... Yeah, I, there you go. Yeah, you can start it slow. But the cello rondo we really feel at the end. So if you have, uh-huh. then you can stay there and then retard there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So give it a shot. Maybe start back at the uh, that A. Did it feel good? Felt pretty good. Yeah, yeah did it? Yeah. It's kind of, it's like exciting when you do it. It's like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> right? You can start. So I like the way you're going. Keep that. Okay. Mm-hmm. But now decide when you want that cello rondo to start. Uh-huh. So I like starting it in that descending chromatic line. Yeah. Just like that. That, like, it's coming alive, man. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Now, you get another one. Um, it's one not, it there. says, enter. Oh, uh huh. Energico y poco a Right. Yeah, that one's so cool. So, where are you going to start the Achelorando here? Right there? Yeah, there. Yeah. Good. You need a little break when you get to the G. Yeah. So at the G, when you have that, you can still, like, just a second. Oh, sorry. Kind of like a little breath, almost? Yeah, just bump. And then that way, coming down, 
can get a little bit more juice there, but here, there you can get a little bit more motion there. So take. Okay. Right? Yeah, now if it just jumps. Yeah, good. It's just... That was a really cool right. shape. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. it. You see, it's a real small, subtle thing that makes a big difference. Uh huh. What what right hand fingering do you use on that top G or that top F sharp? I guess. Um. I do M or I A M I. Cool. Yeah. So I have M A M I. Yep. And I'm, I was That's just fine. thinking. I think I should do I well, A M I there. If it helps. I'm gonna try switching to I. That's fine. Um, I or M. I mean, uh -huh. it's slow enough at the start that the M A A M shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Okay. That's slick. Like yeah. that's it. If you're gonna do it, do that. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the idea. Okay. So you can have the similar, if not the same shape, when you do it again at 80, right? But now here, you can take a little time at the C sharp and the A sharp. So yeah. Now you just gotta count it that way. One and two and three and 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 one. Okay. Might give it a shot. So now deciding how you want that. Yeah. Right? And you're doing this one. Right? You're doing this sixth position? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah! Cool. So at the bottom, when we come down. Like we get a little bit of a, uh, it's not I don't want to say rest, but we're we're we get to sit on it for a second. Yeah. And then that. Not too much here, because we don't want to break the line, right? But like to exaggerate it, like would it be? spots to just yeah like, what like i would micro, do is here micro definitely micro version yeah micro here but now it's more the c b a that way i can get the a really i get a little bit more time okay so like a micro break there and then uh think about it as like the tiniest three note retard okay yeah between do do c la yeah, yeah okay so the shape uh -huh. right okay yeah so that descending cba sharp we stretch it out gives us a chance to get up there and it's just more expression Right, I so you'd have one and two and three and one and two and three and one and that that little shape, that little go over the hump of the hill. So you have yeah. and two and three and one 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 and you feel the wave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I 
called that section out because notice now it's just like I'm doing that section. Everything I've got is focused right there. Mm -hmm. That's good, man. Those are some great shapes. Now you got to do it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Do you want to chat about some other yep. things? I'll, okay. So I'll turn off the recording and everything. Okay. So Bye, thanks. everybody. Yeah. Thanks, YouTube. Thanks for watching.